Ding dong, merrily on high, in heaven the bells are ringing. Ding dong, merrily the sky is ringed with angels singing. Oh, 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 It's a holy, holy roll, let steeple bells be swung in, and the holy, holy roll, by priest and people sung in. Good morning and merry continuing Christmas to you. Grace to you and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Please join in the call to worship. There is good news of great joy for all. Our Savior is born, Christ the Lord. The Word became flesh to live among us. Now we have seen the glory of God. All glory to you, great God, for the gift of your Son, whom you have sent to save us. With singing angels, let us praise your name and tell the earth his story, that all may believe, rejoice, and bow down, acknowledging your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 
like a great light in a land of deep darkness, the mercy of the Lord shines to us. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. God, God of, of grace, grace and, and truth, truth. In, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ you came, you came among, among us as light shining in, in the darkness. darkness. We, we confess, confess that we have not welcomed the light or trusted the good news to be good. Be good. We have, we have closed, closed our eyes to the glory in our midst, our midst expecting little and hoping, and hoping for less. For less. Forgive, Forgive our, our doubt and, and renew our hope so that, so that we, we may receive the fullness of your, of your grace, grace and, and live in the truth, in the truth of, of Christ, Christ the Lord. Lord. Hear the promise of the Lord. See, your salvation has come. You are a holy people, redeemed by God, sought out and not forsaken. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In him we are forgiven. Amen. Glad that you've chosen to join us on this Sunday, which admittedly is a Sunday of very uh, low attendance, the Sunday after Christmas. And we're glad that you have chosen to make us a part of your ongoing celebration of the coming of the light of Christ among us.
Let us pray. Gracious God, by the gift of your Holy Spirit, show us the Word made flesh, good news of great joy for all, so that we may sing with the angels, glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Galatians. This is our epistle reading in this Sunday in Christmas time. Galatians chapter 4 and verses 4 through 7. Listen to what the Spirit might say to you today in this reading. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit, the spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our Psalter reading is taken from Psalm 148. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise God, all angels. Praise God, all hosts. Praise God, sun and moon. Praise God, all you shining stars. Praise God, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For God commanded, and they were created. God established them forever and ever. God fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling God's command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God's name alone is exalted. God's glory is above earth and heaven. God has raised up a horn for God's people, Praise for all God's faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to God. Praise the Lord. And our gospel reading is taken once again from the gospel according to St. Luke. It's always Luke and Christmas time. And today we are reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. Listen for God's word to you in this reading from Luke. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present Jesus to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Now there was in Jerusalem a man whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. 
And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to the mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At the same moment, she came and began to praise God and speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. May God bless to our understanding this reading from God's holy word, and to God's name be glory and praise. Amen. Well, Mary, continuing Christmas to you once again. This Christmas season, as you know, does not end on December 26, but continues all the way to Epiphany, which is January 6th. We pray that it is for you truly a time of hope, a time of peace, a time of joy, and a time of love. As a Christmas present to you, and frankly to myself, It has been my habit in most years to bring a brief sermon the Sunday after Christmas, more of a meditation than a sermon. Do you recognize these words that we just read? On the lips of that mysterious character, Simeon, in our reading from Luke. Simeon, he makes one single appearance in all the Bible as does the even more obscure prophetess, Anna. Simeon drops in just long enough to sign off and to drop an unexplained omen on poor Mother Mary in his departing. You know, I know these words by heart. I've I've said them by heart more times than I would like to have. They come at the end of the funeral service, but I only know them then in the old Elizabethan language of the King James Version. They're strangely comforting words, really. They're a dismissal to someone who has been longing to take their leave for a very long time, but who has remained dutifully at their post. They're nice. They're a nice benediction to speak over a life. Listen to them again. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. And of course, in the funeral service, you would go on to say, Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. It's nice, isn't it? It's a lovely benediction to speak over a life lived in faith. But Simeon? This mysterious old prophet, whose first words are also his swan song in the pages of the Bible, Simeon is not content to leave it at that, a nice benediction and farewell over his own life. No, he goes on to say some pretty disturbing and ominous things, just for good measure. He says, this child, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many might be revealed. And then he turns to poor Mary. Poor Mary, a mother for the first time, and he says to her, 
and a sword will pierce your heart also. Some baby shower, huh? (laughs) A sword will pierce your own soul too? These are not words that you speak to a young mother. These are not the words she wants to hear when she's just given birth to her first child and when she is still dealing with those troublesome feelings, those hormonal feelings that come with pregnancy and giving birth, and when her body has just been flooded with that hormone oxytocin, which makes us gentle and affectionate, and which floods the bodies of women when they give birth, Simeon needs to stick to the script. Here's what he's supposed to say. He's supposed to say, oh, what a beautiful baby, boy or a girl. Oh, he looks just like you. No, he has your nose and your eyes. That's the stuff you say to a a young mother. At all cost, you should avoid telling her that a sword will pierce her heart. Why? You know why. You know why, because she already knows that a sword will pierce her heart. She knows it, and anyone who has, who has ever loved anyone knows it. Just let her have her moment, her moment of joy and tenderness. We all know that love will cost us. We all know that it will cost us plenty. We know That as as soon as we love another person, we put ourselves in harm's way. We will worry about them. We will long for them. We will wonder why they don't call. We will try to show them what's right in life, and they will often reject our wisdom or just as often our folly. We'll watch them make mistakes that we could have told them they were going to make, We'll watch them make mistakes perhaps that we made and we'll have to stand by powerless as they do it. Go away, Simeon. Go away. You're speaking the obvious here. Everyone who has ever loved has suffered for it. And you don't know the first thing about babies. And you certainly don't know the first thing about young mothers. You know, the thing that sets... Jesus' way apart from other spiritual paths, one of the things, is that the the Jesus way embraces the pain of love. It hallows that pain in the cross. Now hear me. I'm not saying that my religion is better than anyone else's. We all have different emphases in our spiritual paths. And there are spiritual traditions that tell us to avoid pain. But Christianity is pretty unique in that at the heart of its message is the truth that love will cost you something. Love will often hurt you. It will become a cross that you must bear. But in the end, our central theme is resurrection. And the cross blossoms into new life. Love will break our hearts. It will give us sleepless nights, but in the end, it will be worth it. Now, I am not saying that you should remain in a hurtful or abusive relationship for the sake of love. Sadly, there are people whose love is toxic or who take advantage of our love. And we can love these people best by showing them the door. I am saying that the tenderness of love will put you at risk. It will make you vulnerable. When you let your heart get all tangled up in the well-being and the happiness of another, you will suffer for them. You won't be able to protect the ones you love. You won't be able to make the right choices for them. You won't be able to fight all their bullies and diseases and doubts and fears at times. You, like Mary, perhaps will end up standing at the foot of their cross. But, but self-giving love is who God is. Self-giving love is part of the divine life, the holy nature of God that we see in the story. 
And when you participate in it, in this self-giving love, you take part in the very life of God. You take part in something very holy, an eternal thing that will reward your pains with unexpected joy. And that, that is one of the lesser known promises of Christmas. Love is costly, but in the end, it will be its own reward. And so, what are we to do with this knowledge that loving another will entail suffering? Love anyway. Just love anyway. Amen. Let us pray. God of life around us, within us, crying in the newborn baby, shining in the light of the stars, singing perhaps in the songs of angels, draw near to us, your people, in this holy season. Draw near to us as we, in response to your invitation, bring to you our needs, our concerns, our joys our very lives, and present them before you in prayer. We pray for this world in which we live, for its rulers to have wisdom, for its people to live in peace, for there to be enough for everyone. We pray for our planet that suffers under the heel of greed and abuse and self-centeredness giving not a thought to the future and future generations. O God, change our hearts and minds. We pray for the many situations in this world, for the pandemic, that it would soon draw to a close and that we would learn from it its painful lesson, that we would learn to come together as a common humanity across the globe, that we would learn to look out for each other, and to think across borders, and to love across borders. We bring to you in prayer, as we always do, those who are nearest to our hearts. We pray for those who are members of this congregation who are suffering. We pray for the family of Lucille Heckman. We pray for Jeff Carper, Denny Geis, Nancy Geis, Dave Green, Nancy Green, Jim McAnulty, Andrew Astorita, Leroy Blondeau, Jeff Conte, Tommy DeSantis, Shelley Farr, Neil Harrison, Melody Cronwald, our friends at First Baptist Church and their ministries, and their interim pastor, the Reverend Glenn Loper, Brian McFeely, Luann Pattison, Virginia Reinstatler, Brian Shanahan, Mark Wood, the Reverend Kevin Haley. And in this moment, we would silently pause and bring before you those whose names we do not utter aloud, but whom we love and for whom we pray. Hear us, O God, even as together we say the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, Father, who who art art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our debts, 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Please now receive the benediction. Go into the world knowing compassion and seeking justice. Give voice to the silent. Give strength to the weak. See one another. Hear one another. Love one another. It is as simple as that and indeed very hard. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Amen.